Chapter 23, Preoperative Patient Assessment and Management. The goals of preoperative evaluation are to reduce patient risk and the morbidity of surgery, as well as to promote efficiency and reduce costs. Conducting a preoperative evaluation presumes that it will modify patient care and improve outcome. Based on the history and physical examination, the appropriate laboratory tests and preoperative consultations should be obtained. Guided by the history and physical examination, the anesthesiologist should choose the appropriate anesthetic and care plan. The ability to review previous anesthetic records is helpful in detecting the presence of a difficult airway, a history of malignant hyperthermia, and the individual's response to surgical stress and specific anesthetics. The patient should be questioned regarding any previous difficulty with anesthesia. The history should include a complete list of medications, including over-the-counter and herbal products. Evaluation of the airway involves determination of the thyromental distance, the ability to flex the base of the neck and extend the head, and examination of the oral cavity, including dentition. The Malampati classification has become the standard for assessing the relationship of the tongue size relative to the oral cavity, although by itself, the Malampati classification has a low positive predictive value in identifying patients who are difficult to intubate. Preoperative evaluation of the pulmonary system is based on the history and physical examination. Preoperative evaluation of the cardiovascular system includes a review of the patient's history and physical findings. Uncontrolled hypertension must be evaluated and the presence of unstable angina may reflect myocardial ischemia. Detection of the murmur of aortic stenosis is important in the preoperative evaluation. Evaluation of the patient's neurologic system is based on the ability to answer health history questions, which essentially confirms a normal mental status. At the conclusion of the history and physical examination, the anesthesiologist typically assigns the patient to an American Society of Anesthesiologists Physical Status Classification. Preoperative cardiovascular testing should not be performed unless the results will change the perioperative management. Exercise tolerance is one of the most important determinants of perioperative risk and the need for further testing and invasive monitoring. It has not been established that the information obtained from the preoperative electrocardiogram affects clinical care. The exercise electrocardiogram represents the most cost-effective method of detecting ischemia. Stress echocardiography may be of value in evaluating patients with suspected coronary artery disease. Narrowing of the left main coronary artery, as demonstrated on coronary angiography, may be associated with a greater preoperative risk. The site and type of surgery are the strongest predictors of pulmonary complications. Preoperative evaluation of patients with pre-existing pulmonary disease should include assessment of the type and severity of disease, as well as its reversibility. Obstructive sleep apnea is estimated to be present in 9% of females and 24% of males. Preoperative identification of these patients may result in a sleep study to identify the severity of symptoms and need for preoperative initiation of continuous positive airway pressure. The American Society of Anesthesiologists has published guidelines for the perioperative management of patients with obstructive sleep apnea. There is general consensus that preoperative institution of continuous positive airway pressure reduces perioperative risk. Patients with obstructive sleep apnea are exquisitely sensitive to respiratory depressant effects of inhaled anesthetics, sedatives, and opioids. Preoperative communication between the surgeon and anesthesia professional is important for planning the management of a patient with obstructive sleep apnea.
Diabetes mellitus is the most common endocrine disease in adult patients presenting for surgery. These patients have an increased risk of coronary artery disease, perioperative myocardial infarction, and congestive heart failure. Pre-existing peripheral neuropathies and vascular disease may increase the risk of positioning injuries. Autonomic neuropathy is common and may contribute to hemodynamic instability and pulmonary aspiration from gastroparesis. Elective surgery should be delayed if there is evidence of suboptimal glucose control. Evidence is lacking to be able to set standards for the perioperative management of diabetic patients, but at a minimum, an attempt should be made to control the glucose level within a range of 100 to 200 milligrams per deciliter. Perioperative laboratory testing must be interpreted within the context of the clinical situation. Even if testing better defines a disease state, the risks of any intervention based on the results may outweigh the benefit. The current recommendations of the National Blood Resource Education Committee is that a hemoglobin of 7 grams per deciliter is acceptable in patients without systemic disease. In patients with systemic disease, signs of inadequate systemic oxygen delivery are an indication for transfusion. There is a consensus that routine preoperative measurement of electrolytes and coagulation studies in asymptomatic adults is not necessary. In patients with systemic diseases and those taking medications that affect the kidneys, blood urea nitrogen, and creatinine testing are indicated. A prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time are indicated in the presence of previous bleeding disorders and in patient with known or suspected liver disease and in those taking certain medications. Preoperative chest radiography may identify abnormalities that may lead to delay or cancellation of the planned surgical procedure or modification of perioperative care. Routine testing in a population without risk factors can lead to more harm than benefit. Preoperative chest radiography is indicated in patients with a history or clinical evidence of active pulmonary disease and may be indicated routinely only in patients with advanced age. Pulmonary function tests can be categorized into spirometry and arterial blood gas analysis. With the advent of pulse oximetry, the need for preoperative arterial blood gas determinations is less important. A normal serum bicarbonate level virtually excludes the diagnosis of carbon dioxide retention. The preoperative evaluation of the surgical patient continues to be an important component of the anesthesiologist's role. A thorough history and physical examination can be used to identify those medical conditions that might affect perioperative management and direct further laboratory testing. By combining data from the history, physical examination, exercise tolerance, and the stress of the surgical procedure, inappropriate testing can be reduced, but more importantly, appropriate screening tests will be performed. Anesthesiologists can have a significant impact on health resource utilization by performing appropriate laboratory tests.